Hey, how's it going guys? So today I'm going to be giving my uh, initial impressions on my new home theater projector. This is the LG Cinebeam Laser 4K projector. The actual specific model is the uh, HU810PW and I have it mounted right here. It's on a chief ceiling mount um, that originally was hooked up to my Epson 6030UB, but I made some adjustments uh, using some lock nuts and I have it mounted. And um, today I'm just gonna talk about my overall initial impressions of this projector and why I bought it. So the main reason why I got this projector was for one, it has HDMI 2.1, it has all the latest specs, and it's laser based. So what that means is that I don't have to worry about lamp life, it has 20,000 hours, of uh life essentially and um there's some other features as well what really sold me uh with this projector was the price it's about uh four thousand dollars canadian or about three thousand dollars usd and that puts it in the more affordable uh projector range especially for a dedicated home theater and the lg has a lot of modern features that typical projectors just don't have for one, it has this LG Magic Remote. Um, let's see if I can get that in focus for you guys. And it's pretty cool because as soon as you shake it, um, there's a light that turns on, the backlight, especially when it's dark. Um, and with pushing this remote, not only do I turn on the projector, but it also turns on my receiver, just a few seconds, there you go, um, within just a couple of seconds and i no longer need to use my home theater remote or my marantz receiver remote uh, to independently turn on my receiver and my projector and then as you can see on the screen right here it has the web os so this is like the most modern projector in a sense where it has all the um features of a smart tv without being a smart tv um and that's rare and then it also has HDMI ARC, eARC, all these apps built in. And as you can see with this magic remote, it works as a little, um, almost like a Wiimote. And it works really well. Now, of course, it doesn't have Netflix yet, but the app store is always expanding. And right now it has Prime Video, Disney Plus. And then um, just the overall UI is just super cool. Now, in initial reviews, they said that the contrast isn't that great or black levels aren't insane or, or not good. Um, this projector replaced my Sony VPL 520ES. It's one of Sony's like um, native 4K projectors. And the black levels are pretty close. It's not as bad as uh, people make it out to be. And uh, the projector itself has a lot of um, adjustments. If I were to go to the picture mode right here, I'm on filmmaker mode and I have that tuned for this specific screen. So I'm using a high contrast gray screen. And um, if we look over here and we go to picture settings and I go over here, there is a multitude of settings from brightness optimizers to advanced controls, um, which you can basically vary the iris the adaptive contrast and then when you go to advanced controls you have you know uh, other processing features like dynamic contrast changing the gamma um, correcting the color and the overall experience with this projector is quite amazing um, and price wise it's basically priced as much as a Epson 5050 UB and the Epson 5050 UB doesn't even do native 4k properly um, this is an e-shift projector and it's DLP, but because it has um, essentially three independent lasers, uh, one red and two blue, and the blue has a phosphor filter to create the green color, um, there's no color wheel. So the rainbow effect is basically non-existent on this projector. But because it's a laser projector, if you zoom up close, there is something called laser speckle and i'm not sure if you see that but on the color red or anything that uses the red laser you're gonna see a tiny bit of like a sparkle or speckle and um it's not that noticeable but it's definitely there and it's something that i'm not used to um so if you're looking at stuff with a lot of red pigments or like skin tones 
and you notice it um, when you have static pictures you will notice it but i guess that's the only major con with this projector now if we look at the projector itself um the footprint is actually a lot bigger than what other like unboxings or videos made it out to be it's about 30 pounds it's quite hefty and um the lens over here there's a little eyebrow that i put on here it's to prevent spillage light spillage from hitting the top of the screen you can have it on or off i just put it on because i don't like seeing light over here and it doesn't really affect the image quality at all um and then it has all the um nice convenient features such as uh keystone and um lens shift or not yeah it has keystone it has um manual lens shift so unlike the sony or um the jvc x950r that i owned in the past um it's not electric or motorized um it's manual but once you set it up right it works really well and um once i upgraded to a much better mount uh which this is a chief mount i don't really have to worry about you know changing or adjusting the lens shift after set once you set it once and you forget about it um i used to have a cheaper amazon mount and the projector would shake essentially and then when it shakes um well you're constantly adjusting the screen so it fits inside the frame um but with this and now with this new mount i don't have to worry about that at all and at the very top there's these two little notches and those two notches essentially um control the zoom and the focus and if there's anything that's really impressive with this projector the uniformity uh throughout the screen in terms of sharpness and focus is incredible um even compared to the sony the actual text um, even when I'm using it with my home theater PC in the corner over there, my low AV rack, um, it is very sharp and um, the 4K resolution just really pops out. And then to top it all off, uh, another reason why I got this projector is it's low input lag. Now, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just about 45 to 50 milliseconds. But compared to the projectors that I've had in the past, that is okay for gaming it's it's not anything for competitive but for casual gaming uh which is what i do in this home theater room um it is really just really nice to have and as you saw when i turned on the projector um it has features where it just turns on my receiver and it turns on instantly at max brightness within four to five seconds i don't have to worry about the lamp warming up and um this can actually be used in a room with ambient light, which is nice, just by changing the picture mode. So if we focus onto the remote right here, uh, focus by pushing this button right here, I can go to, let's say, uh, bright expert bright room. Hit that, and the picture immediately becomes brighter. And it's very passable for a room with ambient light, and that's something that you don't get with a lot of projectors and even when you do um when you have a projector in high lamp uh mode your projector is loud and this projector is whisper quiet even at these high brightnesses and you don't have to worry about the lamp life degrading when you have it in high lamp mode so my solution to the basically the poor contrast or poor black levels is well it works well with my high contrast screen and it's a 0.9 gain and then once i have it in home theater mode and uh setting the color profile to i think filmmaker mode is actually my favorite the black levels are a lot better and another thing that's really cool with this projector is it has the best her that i've ever seen and because it has a 24 gigabyte per second um bandwidth on the HDMI 2.1 I'm yeah it's not full 48 but two uh you know 24 is good enough at least for uh what I'm using it for um HDR works in 4k 30 hertz and 60 hertz one of the big issues with my previous Sony and most 4k projectors is that once you have it at 60 hertz and you try to do HDR it doesn't work um not at 4k because the HDMI um ports just don't have enough bandwidth to do that and what's really, really cool with this projector, it, it has so many nice surprises, is that it does 120 hertz. I can do 120 hertz gaming at 1440p 
and 1080p. Now, of course, that's kind of redundant when the input lag is so high, but it does that. And that's fantastic if you're watching, you know, uh, sports and you don't have to worry about, you know, um, using like motion processing, even though it does have it, you get that native 120 hertz uh, refresh rate, which is very refreshing <laughs> to say the least. And then let's say if I go to, let's say YouTube, and then I use this remote over here and I search 4K HDR. So let's say I pull up some HDR content right here. Yes, play this video. So there is an ad, ignore the ad. I'm just gonna mute this during the video or ads, whatever. Uh, yeah, you can't get away with ads when you use an inbuilt app. But okay, so HDR, and then if you look at the top corner, HDR automatically turns on, which is pretty, pretty cool. So as soon as I let go of the remote, the screen will just go back to normal, give it a second, and then it goes into HDR mode. And there's some ambient light in the room, but when the light is off and obviously in person, the picture just pops. The color saturation is just fantastic. And it's something that you just need to see in person. And it's the best I've seen on a projector. It's very close to like a bright um, true, like modern TV these days. And in a dark room, it's more than what you need. So that basically wraps up my initial impressions on this projector. I think it's pretty good. I'm going to do like a formal thing or formal review uh, once I have more time with this unit. And once I really fine tune those settings, because there's just something about getting those settings right and maybe even cal color calibrating it because they do have a Kalman uh, software that you can use with this projector. But overall, I'm liking it, and I, th I highly recommend it for any of you guys who uh, seen this projector and you just, you know, don't know if it's right for you yet. So I'll leave it at that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.